Ah, oh, this is so frustrating. In this video, I'll show you a few ways I've found to 3D print really thin objects like this bucket and spade here. The bucket pail itself is a piece of cake to print, but the spade and bucket's handle are a little tricky, especially if you're new to 3D printing. In my particular example, the spade's handle is 2mm thick. I believe the spade's shovel end tapers down to slightly less than 1mm. Depending on your particular printer, you may be able to print thinner objects than this. There are two techniques I found for printing thin objects. The first is to print the object without a raft. This makes it much easier to remove the object from the raft, because there isn't one. Later in the video, I'll show you how I printed thin objects using a raft. This method is generally more reliable, but object removal from rafts can be very frustrating. So first we'll try printing the spade without a raft. If you're going to try this, it's essential to level the bed. Also don't try printing when there are sources of vibrations, for example kids running around or something. These 3D models I'm using are from Thingiverse, so if you want the bucket and the spade then there's a link in the description below. So we're now in the flash print 3D printing application. Let's see if we can print the spade without a raft. So we go to start slicing, then we go to raft, and all we have to do here is click on no. So let's start slicing it, and then we'll send this to the printer and see what happens. So I have successfully used this technique of printing without a raft before. It's worked quite well, particularly when I've been making replica Lego bricks. However, it doesn't always work. Usually the first few layers are okay, but then the nozzle brushes the object and dislodges it from the bed. When this happens, it's best just to abandon the printing because it's really irretrievable. So I think the problem we're having is that the spade just isn't sticking well to the bed. I've heard that you can increase the bed temperature and then it will make objects stick better. So let's see if we can do that. So this time we'll start slicing again. So we'll go to printer and change the platform temperature. So I'm not too sure what the optimal temperature is. I guess it depends on the material. Here I'm using standard PLA. Also, it probably depends on the actual type of object you're printing and also your individual printer. So let's try increasing the platform temperature to 75 centigrade. Again, we won't use a raft, so we'll start slicing. I should also mention it's quite good if you can print something without a raft because then, of course, you don't have to get the object off the raft and also it does save material. So we will send this to the printer and see what happens this time. So as you can see, this one seemed to start off okay. The problem is, over time, it seemed to get a bit warped, and then it all went wrong. So now the spade actually printed quite well, but it's just warped, so it's effectively useless. So printing objects without a raft is possible. I did actually 3D print this skeleton without using a raft. So some objects you can print without a raft, but the spade maybe is too thin. So as you can see, printing without a raft doesn't seem to work for this object, so I'll just put the raft back on. Also, I'll change the bed temperature because that didn't seem to work. So I'll put the bed temperature back to 50 degrees. Now I'll switch on the raft. However, I will change the settings of the raft to make it easier to remove the object from the raft. There are quite a few raft settings here, but I found that the space to model is something that I need to change. What I'll do is to increase it slightly to 0.2 millimeters instead of 0.15. As the tooltip says here, this determines the vertical space between the model and the raft, which makes the raft easier to be removed afterwards. Another thing I've changed is the above raft extrusion ratio. So if it's higher, it makes it more difficult for the raft to be removed. So I'm going to put this down to 40%. So let's print this and see how this turns out. So here is my spade as printed using a raft. The object itself is perfect, assuming I can remove it from the raft. First I'll remove it from the bed. Usually I don't have any problems with this procedure, but just remember not to touch the bed if it's hot. And it just snaps off easily. Next I'll try to remove the object from the raft. You'll need to do this very carefully, otherwise you might break or twist the object. Here's an earlier example of an unsuccessful removal of an object from the raft. As you can see the main problem is that I really twisted the handle. 
I think lots of people tried to use uh, scalpels or mini craft knives to remove things from rafts, but I haven't had too much luck with this. It is actually quite difficult to break the PLA material with a knife like this. If you have any tips for useful tools for removing objects from a raft, then please do leave a comment below. So now I'll try and remove this spade from the raft. So you can hear it snapping off. Uh, it's not too bad. It's coming away. So the handle's done. And there it is. So it's quite a thin object and it has been successfully removed from the raft. It needs a little bit of cleaning up, but it's not too bad. Certainly perfect for my photos. Now my girls can really enjoy the summer seaside fun. Thanks for watching.